As great as Streets of Rage 4 is, it's a shame we had to wait so long for it. Imagine if there was an alternate reality where one of Sega's own internal AM teams had developed a 3D beat-em-up for the Sega Saturn. I wonder what kind of world that would be. Oh wait, we don't have to pretend! That actually happened! Let me introduce you to one of my comfort blanket games, a title I return to regularly, Die Hard Arcade. While this game originally and unsurprisingly released in the arcade, and I think we even had a cabinet in the nearby town of Roxham, I first encountered Die Hard Arcade as its Saturn port at my best friend Richie's house, where we endlessly played co-op together. Eventually, Richie wanted to upgrade to a PlayStation, so his mum sold his Saturn, and all of his games, to my own mum. Yeah, talk about a hand-me-down. I still have that same Saturn now. Richie regretted selling that console so much that, in our college years, I bought him a replacement Saturn and a copy of Die Hard Arcade. You know, back in the days where you could easily do that on a whim for under £50, before the retro market went absolutely insane. We still play Die Hard Arcade together when we cross counties to visit each other now as adults, and I don't think we would have it any other way. My kids are also at an age where they now enjoy playing it with me too. The footage you'll see today comes from a run with Richie and several playthroughs with my son. Given that, I have a lot of emotional attachment to this game, and that's undoubtedly going to influence my thoughts here. But I'm also 100% here for that. I think it's okay for YouTubers to just unapologetically gush about their favourite games without having to be objective all the time. So let's get into that. What's the deal with this game? Closely following the plot of the first Die Hard movie, John McClane and his partner Chris Thompson battle their way through Nakatomi Plaza where the evil wolf White Fang Hongo is holding the president's daughter hostage. His plan? To steal six hundred million dollars. Wait, what? Something to clarify early is that this title was never conceived as a Die Hard game. In Japan, Sega's AM1, the guys behind Golden Axe, The House of the Dead, and Bonanza Brothers, developed and released this punch fest as Dynamite Decca, a wholly original title. During development, Sega agreed an assumptively lucrative licensing deal that allowed them to capitalise on Die Hard's brand awareness in the West for minimal in-game changes or effort. The game's name was changed to Die Hard Arcade, the main character was renamed from Bruno Dellinger to John McClane, and the nondescript skyscraper that the game takes place in was swapped out for Nakatomi. For the most part, this doesn't impact the game in any meaningful way. Sure, you might occasionally see the Nakatomi Plaza logo plastered in a few places, but at a glance you'd be hard-pressed to tell footage of the Japanese and Western versions apart. The only inconsistency is that, late into the game, you battle on a bridge that joins two adjacent buildings. While you can see this walkway from the exterior of the structure's original Japanese design, Nakatomi's single tower structure simply doesn't allow this area to exist in any way that makes sense. This becomes painfully obvious when you compare the footage showing your route to the next stage side by side. So yeah, no estranged wife, no Yippie Kaye, no Argyle, no Sergeant Powell, and no Hans Gruber. This is a diehard game in name only, but ho ho ho, you still get a machine gun. In fact, you get a lot of guns in this game, from pistols to straight up rocket launchers. It helps set the game apart from Streets of Rage. Movement, range, and crowd control have to be approached with a little more care when both you and your enemies are packing heat. Like many 2D belt action brawlers, you're restricted to attacking to the left and right, so a lot of time can be spent shuffling up and down to line up shots. Handguns also give you access to an arrest move that can one-shot most enemies and is the basis for the world record speedrun of the game. The introduction of firearms leads into another gameplay change. You can carry certain items, mainly ammo, and handguns will follow you screen to screen instead of being automatically dropped at the end of an area like larger weapons are. Weapons can even be combined. For example, finding a lighter and then a can of deodorant gives you access to a flamethrower. That's pretty awesome in-game, but is something you should seriously never try at home. That's not to say you're defenseless without a weapon. 
For a game that only uses three of the Saturn's six face buttons, no doubt a symptom of being an arcade port, Die Hard Arcade has an impressive move list that consumes five pages of the European manual. To this day, I still accidentally pull off moves I've never seen before that I didn't know were in the game. Despite the expansive command list, the game retains the genre's pick-up-and-play beginner-friendly nature. Anyone can join in on the fun and hold their own, even if they're just button-bashing across the punch, kick, and jump buttons. You'll want to remember which button is which, because in between rooms, you might be asked to press one in a QTE where failure means fighting extra enemies. Yeah, you thought Shemu invented those? Sega were using them a whole three years earlier, and games like Dragon's Lair were essentially nothing but QTEs years before that. My absolute favourite is this poor woman who just steps out into a corridor to see what all the noise is, and BAM! Gets knocked out. It's almost as funny to my juvenile mind as bursting into a bathroom while a henchman is still peeing. Some of the QTE sequences involve Wolf Hongo, the final boss, which breaks continuity. Cutscenes between stages, which have some of the most meme-worthy animation I've ever seen, look at these faces, show Hongo in an office while his men open a vault. He can't be in two places at the same time, and there's no way he's running back and forth all over the map. These cutscenes and QTEs can cause another problem if you're using an upscaler or a modern TV. The game seemingly switches its output mode or resolution for these cutaways, and that causes some modern technology to lose the signal for a few seconds. Enough time for you to miss a button prompt or take some unfair hits. Thankfully, my equipment seems to be okay with it, but it is something to bear in mind as these scene changes happen fairly frequently. It's debatable as to whether failing these QTEs is a good or bad thing. On the one hand, Die Hard Arcade is only around 20 minutes long, so these extra encounters give you a little more playtime and an opportunity to increase that high score. But on the other, they increase your chances of taking damage and losing valuable lives. This was originally an arcade game, so deaths can occur frequently, and the home port only starts you off with four credits, not nearly enough to complete the game. Fortunately, you can farm as many credits as you want in the Saturn release's bonus game, Deep Scan. In this Atari-like bonus game, you're a ship dropping bombs onto submarines while avoiding torpedoes. Sounds simple enough. The problem is the game has an agonizingly slow pace, has nothing to do with the main game, yet is practically required at the start of every run. In fact, corp sessions usually look a lot like this. Hey, fancy a game of Die Hard Arcade? Yeah, 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 let's go for Grab it. Grab a controller. Yes. Alright, cool. I just need one minute. Uh, okay. Yeah, give me one sec. And, and this is... Uh, uh, this is just getting us some extra credits, don't worry about it. It, it just takes a second, it doesn't take long. It doesn't take long. But we do get to punch people at some point. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's coming, that's coming. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. This is just the setup. It's fine. This is good. This is good. Deep Scan undeniably slows things down, breaks the flow, and in some cases kills the enthusiasm every single time you go to play Die Hard Arcade. It's probably just here to combat the title's overall short length and lack of replay value to anyone who isn't me and Richie. Another downside is that while games like Streets of Rage see you visit a wide variety of locales and environments, Die Hard Arcade all takes place within the same building. Even with its inherent charm and my nostalgia for it, things quickly start to feel a little samey. Even some of the enemies are obvious reskins. These goons are clearly using the same animations and tactics as the police, which... Hang on, we're police. Aren't we on the same side? To the same point, why are we fighting firemen? This is one of those games where the more you try to make sense of it, the more problems you'll see. You kind of just have to roll with it as dumb fun. Fortunately, Sega would have an opportunity to address a lot of these complaints and criticisms in its Japan-exclusive Sega Ages remake, 
released in 2006, where strangely Bruno looks a lot more like Bruce Willis than he did in Die Hard Arcade, despite not having that licensing or branding here. Let's see how they did. Oh, hey, do you want to play the PlayStation 2 version? Does I have that deep scan bullshit? No, 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 but just give me one minute. One minute. Oh, come on! Yeah, deep scan is gone, but in its place is Periscope, a 3D recreation of an actual amusement Sega put out when they were still known as service games. Thankfully, it's much easier to quickly rack up credits here, just tilt the view slightly to the left and fire when the ship reaches the four dots for a guaranteed hit every time. Still, it is a roadblock I could have done without. On the plus side, the game has received a significant graphical overhaul and looks gorgeous. Sure, it loses some of that sweet meme appeal, but you can't deny that Sega did a fantastic job all around of modernizing the game while respecting the original's look and feel. If you are jonesing for the original graphics, there is a Sega Saturn mode which mostly replicates the original look well enough. There are some hitches. You can see the lines where the wall in this boss room separates, the spotlight from the helicopter at the end has a line down the middle where two meshes seemingly collide, but for the most part it's a faithful recreation. In fact, I mixed some footage of it into the Saturn part of the review, see if you can spot which footage is which. Some of the option sliders are initially set to the opposite values of their Saturn defaults. Friendly Fire, a must for absolute chaos and friendly arguments, is turned off while Violence, aka Blood, is turned on. That's an easy fix, and the gameplay is otherwise on point. Everything from the movement speed to the animations to the damage values feels right to a pair of guys who have poured far more hours into this game than anyone ever reasonably should. There are even some attempts to add some much needed replay value. As you play the game, you start to unlock new modes. First we have Arrest Mode. Here you can only defeat enemies by arresting them. You can punch and kick them all day, they'll just keep getting back up. Also, turns out I'm really bad at arresting people. The next is One Shot Kill Mode, which is self-explanatory. My first attempt went pretty badly. Then we have Deadline Mode, where you have infinite health but are also on a fairly strict time limit. You do not want to fail QTEs here, the extra fights while the clock is ticking down are a death sentence. Finally, we have my personal favourite, Altered Beast Mode, where you play as the wolf and eagle forms from… well, Altered Beast. Your health constantly drains and you need to grab spirit orbs to top it back up. These animal forms aren't the only visual change. In my footage of the other bonus modes, you may have noticed they added a costume resembling Elvis, a Santa outfit, a schoolgirl with a Dreamcast on her head, and... I was actually quite surprised to see these here. It's a concept the series would bring back two games later, but I'm getting ahead of myself. You can't credit farm these modes, you get one life and one life only. Which is why my button mashing ass doesn't have much footage of them. Still, they offer a fresh challenge and change up some rooms and hazards, add new weapons, and make other small tweaks to keep the short campaign feeling fresh for returning players. Bar the frame rate tanking whenever you use a rocket launcher, I would confidently describe the PlayStation 2 version as an outright replacement for the Saturn original. If you have access to it, there's really no reason to go back to the earlier version. Sega did a damn fine job here. Sadly, Die Hard Arcade isn't the cheapest or easiest game to get a hold of these days, and that's especially true for the Japan-only PS2 remake. Unless Sega re-release it, I wouldn't blame you for using an emulator, ODE, or pseudo Saturn cart to play this one, and to be perfectly clear, I do highly recommend that you play it. Thankfully, this wouldn't be the end of Dynamite Decker, as there would be two sequels, one of which I played for years before finally realising it was Die Hard Arcade 2, a series of light novels, and cameos in other Sega titles. 
stick around and maybe I'll tell you more about them in the near future. For now, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. You uh, you you nearly done? Yeah, I, I yeah, I think just just a couple more, just a couple more credits. I think that's all we need. I think I think thirty is about the right amount. Thirty. Yeah, yeah. I think that's what we need. Yeah, that's what I'm aiming for. I mean, I mean, I'm aiming on twelve, but it's not much longer. Not too much longer. Yeah. Because it's, it's taken you about six minutes to get to twelve. Yeah, I know, but it's literally well, it won't take me too much longer. Once you get past the first bit, it's it's really easy and really quick. Once you get going. I mean, I can cut and change these in between clips of deep scan, but I think I've overplayed the joke at this point. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think they'll get the point. I mean, it's yeah. only going to be like a 30 second clip anyway. Right. <laughs> I hope it's that's really that's going to end up in post credits now, I think. Good. <laughs> now that we've overplayed this. <laughs>